hello Power Rappers. It's been a little while since my last video, uh, a month or so, so that's not too bad for me. Um, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do, or how I do val data validation. And as the title of this video suggests, I believe this is the best way to do data validation in Power Apps. Now you would think when building forms, this kind of thing would be just given to you out of the box easy like other form builders. But in PowerApps, you don't really get this sort of functionality out of the box. You've got to build it yourself. And um, it's actually pretty easy once you sort of get your head around it. And um, the way I'm going to show you today, I feel it is the best way to do it. And those reasons why, how I justify that statement is I, I feel it simplifies data validation to a point where if once you've rolled out your application and someone else is um, maybe another developer has to take a look at it, they'll, they should easily be able to find that validation logic within your Power App following the sort of simple methodology. So let's get straight in to, um, let's get straight into today's demo. And if we look at on the screen at the moment, let me just bring up the home screen. This is the app that we've, that has featured in the last few demos. And it's a good application to demo data validation because we haven't implemented any validation up until this point in this app. If we take a look at the home screen here, I click on play. We can see our records that we're, we're storing or our issues that we're storing. And if we click the plus to add a new issue, we've got these fields, title, description, and priority. But um, as you can see, our save button's just enabled. So at any time we could click save. And when we do click save, it'll just save that record. And look, we've got these blank, we got this blank data. And if we click on view, we can see that the app well, that record just got saved without a title, which is not really ideal. And no description and no priority. So, you know, we, we don't really want this happening in our application when we roll it out to end users, because without a doubt, end users will end up just saving a whole heap of junk into the into your table or into your SharePoint list. And you'll end up with a whole heap of junk in there. Now, when you get in when when you've been given your use case or when you're trying to analyze your business uh, problem that you're trying to solve with power apps inevitably they will tell you or the key stakeholder whoever is is tasking you with this particular uh, use case they will have some kind of validation rules that they want to implement a classic way of um representing on a form when a field is mandatory is showing like a little asterisk or a little red asterisk above the actual title or sorry above the actual field and the behavior usually is that that asterisk will be visible when that that validation requirement hasn't been fulfilled now this is important to sort of employ these um, UI or UX type of features in your app because people understand them without people already understand what that asterisk means. So it's it it's a really good way to to get um, when when someone opens your app, they can look at the form and they instantly know without sort of explaining it to them that this field is required. So the way I do this is I will create these indicators on each field and then I will build in the logic, the validation logic within each one of those indicators. But let me, rather than talking about it, let's just do it. So let's, let's first implement a indicator for our title. So in this case, we want the user to fill out the title field and we want our indicator to show that uh, to be visible when our title field is uh, blank, because that means that we still haven't, like I said, we haven't fulfilled our validation requirements. So I just use a label. Let's insert a label and I always make sure that your labels or all your fields as you add them to your Power App are uh, named correctly because you're going to need to know how to reference those fields later when you're doing your patch or when you're doing when you're adding more logic to other fields we need to understand exactly what we're what we're pointing to 
So if we just move this down here and I'm going to call this label indicator and let's just call it indicator one and yeah, let's just call it indicator one and indicator one is just going to be a little asterisk. And the other thing I'm going to do here is just going to change the color of it to be red. Yeah, I think that's a good red color to use, but we might actually bold it as well. So it's nice and bright. So if we just run that form there. See, we've got this little red asterisk above title, but it's, you know, it's not doing anything at the moment. If we run and we type something in, the asterisk is still there, right? Okay, so in a way that kind of shows us that it's, that it's uh, that it is mandatory, but we can we we can do a lot better than just that. So on the visible property, we want to use an if statement. So rather than just always showing it, we want to do a little bit of checking. So the field we're checking is the title field. So that title field is called txt title. So I'm just selecting that field in the list of uh, properties, or in sorry, in the list of controls I've got on this page and I'm selecting the txt title. Now I want to actually look at the text property and I'm checking if that equals just open close quotes which are sort of a, a string with zero um, of zero length. And if that's the case I'm going to return back true which means that if that if there's no text inside of the title field I want to return back true to the visible property on that star. So that's true. And if there is some text in there, so if this is, if in here is something different from this zero length string, then don't show it. So if we run that, and now when we start typing, the little star disappears. So let's create a new indicator. So we've, that's for title. So in here, so let's drop a new, let's just copy that actually, because we've just created that. So if we copy, so we hit the little ellipse on indicator copy and then paste. Now we've got another indicator. Let's just drop that down next to the description field and let's call this indicator two. So I'm just renaming that field, that little indicated indicator two. And I can even move this, reorder this up so they, they sit in order in, in the um, list of controls on that page. And under indicator two, go down to the visible property. So of course now this is, we don't want to check if title, remember we just copied that field. So we've copied all the properties, including the visible, but we're now, we want this to check if this field, so this field is called TXT description. So if we go up here to indicator two, we just change this to TXT description is a zero length string, then show this asterisk, otherwise don't show it. So if we run that, we start typing, that disappears. We've still got the star up here because that's visible. And now both of our stars are, are, are hidden, which means that we've got some text in both of these fields. So that's perfect. Right, so let's put one more down on priority because this is a slightly different field. So again, I'm gonna copy that and paste it. So now I've got another label. Let's just rename this to indicator three. And I can move these up. So they're in like sort of nice order in our, in our control list. And here, if we go down to the visible property, so this is gonna be a little bit different. We need to check if uh, any of these, um, if this field has been selected or not. And we do that in a slightly different way. So this is RDO property. So up here, all we wanna do is get rid of that if. We're still using, we're still looking at the visible property for that control. And we wanna select our our uh, radio control, and I've called that radio control RDO property. 
So dot selected dot value. So now I'm looking at what is the value of this particular radio control. And I'm just going to say if that equal is equal to blank, and I'm going to use this built in function called blank, just called blank, open, uh, open bracket, close bracket, which is indicating that it's a function. We don't have to pass it anything, but we're just saying if this value is blank, so I haven't selected anything in here, then show the asterisk. Otherwise, if something has been selected, it means the user has interacted with the control and has selected something. So they've fulfilled my validation and don't show the star. So if we go down here to priority and I say, yep, our priority for our, our issue is normal and our star has disappeared now. Okay, so that that's all the validation that I want to um, check because I don't really care if the user submits any files or not. So we'll just leave it to these three. And I want to make sure that these three fields have been filled out by the user that these two are not blank and this actually has a value in there before the user can save. So as you've noticed, that save button is has is still enabled so even though i've got these little asterisks next to the fields all i'm really done is hiding and showing these fields i'm not doing anything with it the user is still able to click save so that's the final bit is, uh, that i need to implement to make sure that everything is um that the this record has been submitted with these fields filled out so what i need to do next well, the last real thing, um, key thing that I need to do is I need to restrict the this access to this button, or I need to restrict how this button is displayed when these fields are filled out, or when these fields haven't been filled out. Now, rather than because we've created these indicators, we don't need to check the values of each one of these properties. All we need to check is if these fields uh, if the indicators, sorry. So all we need to check is if the indicators are visible or not. So what we've done is we've sort of abstracted a lot of that, that, uh, validation data. So rather than jamming all of that validation data into the one control, we've now spread that across the entire form and we've simplified how we would manage that validation data. So it's, so now all we need to worry about on the control is, or on our save button is, are all of those indicators visible? Or if, if, if even one of those indicators is visible, then we don't want them clicking on the save button. So let's implement that. So on our, on our save, we want to go to the display mode. And at the moment we just edit, which means we can interact with it. And we want to stop that. We need a bit of, Need a bit of logic here. So if so, if indicator one visible equals true, or indicator well indicator two visible equals true, or indicator three. <laughs> see where this is going visible equals true then we remember we're editing we're editing the display mode property of our button so this display mode is expecting a display mode returned back or a display mode option filled in into this property of this button so we need to re once this has been evaluated, we need to return back a display mode. So if any of these are true, which means if any of these are visible, we want to disable this button. So the display mode will be disabled. Otherwise, if all of these are true, we want them to be able to press the button. So let's run that. 
we can see we've got a disabled save button now and the, the, the UI is quite good. The out of the box UI with Power BI is decent because when you dis when you disable the save button or when you disable a button in power apps it kind of goes this grayed color um so whatever color you've created the button when you disable it or even if you use an icon to do your save when you when you disable it it kind of goes this grayed out and that's a that's a sort of typical behavior that you get from uh, web apps and applications when something is disabled it grays out so this is actually really good that power apps does this for you out of the box of course you can customize this if you want to if you don't want it to do this this kind of behavior when it's dis, uh, disabled there are properties on this button to change those colors and and whatever but i like the out of the box just being grayed because that makes sense to the user so our button is grayed out. So now we can't save our issue. So we're not going to get any more issues arriving in our list or being saved to our list that don't have a title, don't have a description and don't have a priority. So in here, if I type something in in our title, we're still grayed out. And then if we click something in our description, suddenly we now have we're able to save our record and we've already filled out priority so we're we're good to go and that is how i implement a really simple validation and you can expand on this i mean you can have a form with 20 30 40 controls on your page and you can have it um you can you can have all of those all of those uh, fields, all those indicators sitting above those controls, and then all you have to do in your save button or your validation, this might be a next button because you might have more screens on your app, and you want to restrict the next button until ev until the users fill that everything on that screen. So it's it's the same principle. You would just disable that next button. So. Um, yeah, you could have like 20, 30, 40 controls on one page and just have all of that validation, all that checking just on this particular, on your your control saying, you know, are any of those indicators blank? Um, are any of those indicators visible? And if they are, just don't let, let them click on that button. And of course, this validation doesn't necessarily have to be applied to a save or a next. It could be something inside of your actual form itself where you want to restrict access to other controls or other fields. So you don't want to use a say filling out a description field until they've filled out the title. And this principle will work exactly the same way as that. So anyway, I hope you found that useful. Like I said, this is the way I implement validation in Power Apps and I really do think this is the best way to do it.